One minute ago at Campi Flegre, ground sensors hit record pressure levels, higher than anything on digital record, verified by independent seismic and satellite data. This has never happened before. With every hour, the rate of uplift and gas release accelerates right beneath hundreds of thousands of residents. If the caldera's cap rock can't hold, what breaks first? The ground, the escape routes, or the quiet on the surface? At 9 a.m. UTC, the Rioni Terra GNSS station in Pozzuoli logs a sharp rise, plus 12 millimeters of vertical displacement in just 72 hours. Sentinel-1 a radar sweeps confirm the same uplift, a matching 12mm bulge centered inside the caldera, its outline tracing the city's ancient rim. Tilt meters echo the signal, registering a 0.014 milliradian swing northwest, the needle drifting in sync with the ground's subtle tilt. Each instrument, satellite, GPS, tilt, runs on separate power, separate clocks, but the trend is identical. The ground is moving upward, not by chance, but by pressure stored below. Seismic analysts at INGV feed this deformation into their models. The AI Enhanced Earthquake Catalog flashes red, a fourfold jump in detected events compared to last year. Over the past 72 hours, more than 40 micro earthquakes per day cluster at depths between 2 and 3 kilometers, directly beneath the uplift. The largest, magnitude 4.6, rattled Pozzuoli just weeks ago, the strongest since digital records began in 2002. Epicenters sketch a partial ring beneath the city, mapping out hidden faults that weren't visible before, now illuminated by thousands of tiny shocks. Each quake, each millimeter of rise, is a symptom of the same process, pressure building in the hydrothermal reservoir, pushing up on the cap rock. The ground flexes, but it does not break. Not yet. The data converge. Deformation and seismicity are no longer slow or isolated. They are synchronized, persistent, and accelerating. The path of strain, upward and outward, follows the geometry of the faults, hinting at where the next rupture might surface. The question is not if the rock will yield, but where and how soon. Technicians at the Solfatara Monitoring Station start their shift with a fresh gas dataset. At 9 a.m. UTC on November 2, 2025, carbon dioxide emissions reach 3,380 tons per day, well above the long-term average for the caldera. Sulfur dioxide output registers 148 tons per day, a value that sits at the upper edge of the current alert window. The main vent temperature, measured at the Pischiarelli fumarole, holds steady at 117.6 degrees Celsius. Each reading is logged by automated sensors, then checked manually, confirming the spike is real, not a calibration error or passing weather effect. The numbers tell a single story. The hydrothermal system is under pressure. Carbon dioxide, a marker of deep fluid movement, surges as the reservoir below the cap rock is squeezed tighter. Sulfur dioxide, less abundant here than at typical magmatic volcanoes, still climbs in parallel. Evidence that gas pathways are opening and the system is venting more aggressively. The vent temperature, already above the 110 degree threshold for heightened concern, reflects direct heating from below, not just surface weather or seasonal change. Data from the past 72 hours show each indicator rising in step with ground deformation. The gas flux curve bends upward at the same moment as the GNSS and INSAR bulge. Field teams note the correlation in their logs. When the ground lifts, the gases follow. This chemical signature confirms the mechanical strain detected by satellites and tilt meters. The reservoir is not just swelling, it is actively degassing pushing out more heat and volatile compounds than at any point since the digital record began. For civil protection, these values mean the system is moving quickly. If the gas flux keeps rising, the risk of hydrothermal disturbance grows, setting the stage for whatever comes next. 
In Pozzuoli, the ground has heaved upward before, sometimes for years, without erupting. The most direct comparison comes from the 1983-84 to 84 episode, when the city rose nearly two meters in less than two years. Streets cracked, doors stuck, and families spent nights in cars, but no eruption followed. Scientists traced the cause to fluids, water, and steam, pressurizing the reservoir beneath the cap rock, squeezing the ground upward. The city endured relentless tremors and visible damage, yet the pressure eventually eased. Uplift slowed, seismic swarms faded, and the caldera subsided without a blast. Today's data echo that cycle. Synchronized uplift, shallow quakes, gas surges, all pointing to a system venting stress through cracks and micro faults. Claudia Esposito, who lived through both crises, remembers. In 84, we watched the walls for new cracks every day. Now, it's the same fear, but also the same hope, that the ground will settle before anything worse happens. For most residents, the likely path is not eruption, but another tense, damaging phase, relief mixed with vigilance. In rare cases, magma creeps upward, but never reaches the surface. This stalled intrusion can keep Campi Flegrae restless for weeks or months, with signals stuck in the danger zone. Scientists at INGV monitor every pulse, searching for patterns that echo the past. Monte Nuovo, the hill that rose in 1538, began as a similar episode, months of swelling, shallow quakes, and rising gas. Back then, the system finally broke through, but most intrusions in modern times stall below the cap rock, unable to force an eruption. Instead, pressure lingers, the ground stays lifted, earthquakes continue, and gas remains high. Each day without a breakthrough stretches the uncertainty. For residents, this means more cracked walls, more sleepless nights, and a constant watch for new alerts. Modelers warn that a stalled intrusion is not a pause, but a prolonged hazard window. The system can simmer like this for months, testing nerves and infrastructure until the pressure finally drops or finds a new path upward. Hazard analysts study the ring fault system beneath Pozzuoli, using seismic data and AI models to define the upper bounds of what Campi Flegrae can unleash. The physical dimensions of this buried fault circle set a natural ceiling. Simulations indicate the cap rock could sustain a rupture up to about magnitude 5.0, but not more. This limit is not theoretical. It comes from the mapped length and geometry of the fault, confirmed by thousands of microquakes logged since 2023. In the worst case scenario, if pressure overwhelms the cap, a hydrothermal or magmatic blast could occur. Such an event would fracture the shallow rock, releasing a violent surge of steam, gas, and debris. Yet, the odds remain low. The probability of a quake larger than magnitude 4 in the next 90 days sits at around 5%, based on the latest hazard models. Catastrophic blasts are rare, poorly forecastable, and have not been seen here in centuries. The maximum credible event is defined by the ring fault size, not by speculation. Science sets the boundaries, and authorities calibrate their thresholds accordingly. Protezione Seville confirms the yellow alert for Campi Flegre as of 9 a.m. UTC, November 2, 2025. This status signals that volcanic activity is elevated above normal, but no eruption is expected in the immediate future. Scientists and civil authorities review ground deformation, earthquake swarms, and gas emissions daily. Technical meetings are scheduled at least once every week, and extraordinary sessions can be called within hours if any parameter rises sharply. The yellow level means enhanced monitoring, not evacuation. Residents are advised to stay informed through official channels. No special action is required at this time. Emergency plans are updated behind the scenes, with local authorities checking contact lists and readiness protocols. Protezione Seville's spokesperson stresses that the system is designed to catch any change early, 
If thresholds are crossed, both the alert level and public instructions will be updated promptly. For now, vigilance and clear communication remain the priority. For anyone watching the numbers, the next 48 to 72 hours come down to a few clear signals. If ground uplift pushes above 15 millimeters per month, or if any single station logs a sudden jump of more than 5 millimeters in a day, that's a red flag. A sharp increase in shallow earthquakes, especially more than 80 events daily, or any quake above magnitude 3.5, means attention is needed. Gas emissions matter too. Carbon dioxide over 3,800 tons per day, or sulfur dioxide rising past 15 tons per day, signals escalation, especially if vent temperatures climb above 120 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, if uplift drops below 8 millimeters per month and quake rates settle under 20 per day, risk is easing. Stabilizing gas and a cooling vent are good signs. All thresholds rely on confirmation from at least two independent systems. No single metric decides the alert. At 9 a.m. UTC on November 2, 2025, Campi Flegri's sensors reported a 12mm uplift in just 72 hours, the highest recorded by INGV since digital monitoring began in the 1980s. Multiple independent systems, including GPS, INSAR, tilt meters, and gas measurements, confirmed a sudden and widespread pressure increase across the caldera. These data mark a clear departure from previous unrest episodes, such as the 1983-84 Brady schism, and highlight a unique alignment of mechanical and chemical signals. Yet, despite this unprecedented spike and the official yellow alert now in effect, fundamental questions remain. What precise conditions will trigger Caprock failure? How rapidly can shallow systems shift from deformation to disruption? Historical records show that most unrest cycles resolve without eruption, while rare events like Monte Nuovo in 1538 demonstrate what is possible. For now, daily reviews by Protezione Civile and INGVI continue guided by set thresholds and public watch lists. The evidence shows that vigilance, not fear, is the essential response as the region faces a level of activity never documented in the modern era.